Hello, everybody. Um, I hope that you guys are all doing well and you're healthy at home and you're finding some time to get your homework done as well as getting outside in this beautiful sunshine. So um, today I'm going to go over a few problems on factoring. We're going to do our Monday assignment a little bit different this week. We're going to do an I do, we do. So I'm going to work a problem, then you're going to work a problem. Okay. And you should see the attached worksheet for the problems that we're going to do. All right. So the first problem I'm going to work for you guys is on the left hand column. So I have seven B squared minus 21 X. Okay. Looking at this, you might initially think that you're not able to factor it because the variables are different. But if you look at the numbers in front, the numbers in front have something in common, right? Because 7 can go into 21. So we're going to pull out a 7 from these. So I get 7 times, if I take the 7 away in this first term, I get, I'm left with a b squared minus 21 divided by 7 is 3. And then I still have this variable x, all right? And that is my finished term. So this is a one-step problem here, okay? That should be your answer. Now I want you guys to pause the video, and I want you guys to work the problem that corresponds to this one in the right-hand column. All right, I hope that you guys got that one and are ready to move on. So let's work another problem. The problem I'm gonna work this time is in the right-hand column. All right, it's six times x plus five y plus y times x plus five y. Now, what a lot of you guys did was you took these first terms, so what's in front, the six, and you distributed it to each thing here. Factoring is not distributing. Factoring is taking things out and breaking it down, okay? so. Don't distribute what's in front of your parentheses when you see these, all right? Now, this is a pretty easy problem because if you look at it, we have what is inside of our parentheses here. They're already the same, okay? Because they're the same, we can carry that parentheses down. So I get x plus 5y, all right? But we have one more set of parentheses, all right? So if you look at what's in front here, I have six and a y, okay? So my first term in my parentheses is gonna be six, and then my second term in my parentheses is gonna be this, what's in front of my second one, which is plus y, okay? And that is my answer for this one. Be sure to box or highlight your answers, okay? Now, I want you guys to pause the video and work the corresponding problem in the left-hand column. All right, hope that that went well for you guys. Now, let's go ahead and work another problem. This one is in the left-hand column. All right, it's 7r cubed minus 35r squared plus 6r minus 30. Okay, my R's are not the best. All right, so what you want to do is don't rearrange this. I want you to work it as it is. It's in descending order of powers, so we're going to work like that, okay? So we're going to take the first terms and group them, and then we're going to take the second terms and group them, all right? So looking at my first set of parentheses here, can 7 go into 35? Okay, the easy way to test that is that you take out your calculator, divide 35 by 7, or do it in your head, okay? 35 is divisible by 7, so I'm going to pull a 7 out for sure. All right, then what you're going to do is you're going to take out the variable with the lowest exponent, okay? So this is an r cubed and an r squared. The lowest exponent is this r squared. So I'm going to pull out an r squared. If I do that, if I pull out a 7r squared out of this front set of parentheses, take 7 divided by 7, I get 1, okay? 
I have three R's in this first one, but I took out two of them, so I'm left with one R, okay? Minus 35 divided by seven is five. And then I took out this R squared, okay? So there's no more R's there, all right? Now, when you do this, if you factor that first term correctly, this gives you something to shoot for for your second set of parentheses, okay? We want these two set of parentheses to match. So what can I take out of my second set of parentheses to make it look like this one, okay? I know six will go into 30, so I'm gonna pull out a six. I cannot pull out an R because there's no R in my second term, all right? But if I pull out a six, 6r divided by 6 gives me just an r. And then negative 30 divided by 6 gives me a negative 5. Okay? Now my parentheses match. Okay? A 1r is exactly the same as just r. So I'm going to take that away. All right? Now, because these two match, I'm going to carry it down just like we did in the last problem. I have r minus 5. Okay, now what's in front is going to be my other set of parentheses, the 7r squared and this plus 6. Okay, so I have 7r squared plus 6. Okay, and that is my answer. All right, now I want you guys to pause the video and I want you guys to work the corresponding problem in the right hand column. All right. Hope that that went well. Let's do another one. Okay, so I have six. I'm gonna work the problem in the left-hand column now. So I have six x cubed plus 18 x squared plus x plus three. All right. So these are in descending order of powers again. What I mean by that is this is x cubed, this is x squared, this is x, and this one doesn't have one, okay? That's descending order of powers. So I'm gonna group these first two, and then I'm gonna group these second two, all right? Now, six and 18, does six go into 18? I kind of gave you guys a cheat on all of these because most of them, the first number will go into the second number. Okay, that's not always going to be the case in your homework, but just for these ones it is. So 6 will go into 18, so I'm going to pull out a 6. Okay, now take out the variable with the lowest exponent as long as they match, okay? So if this was a y squared, I wouldn't pull it out. I couldn't, okay? So x cubed and x squared, I'm going to pull out an x squared times, so six divided by six is one. X cubed, there's three of them. In that first one, I took away two of them. So I am left with an X. Now 18 divided by six is three, plus three. And there's no X left because I took away the X squared. Okay, I pulled it out front. Now looking at my second set of parentheses, well, I see something kind of similar here. Here's an x plus 3, and here's an x plus 3, okay? Now, there's, there's actually a 1 in front of this x. What's in common between a 1 and a number is always 1. So we're going to pull a 1 out front, plus 1. If I do that, I'm left with x plus 3 inside, because x divided by 1 is x, 3 divided by 1 is 3, okay? My variables match now, so I can pull my parentheses match. So x plus 3 and x plus 3, I'm going to pull that down, x plus 3, all right? And then I need to set up my other set of parentheses, which is what's in front. So I have 6x squared plus 1 times x plus 3, okay? And that is going to be my answer for that one. I want you guys to pause the video and work the problem in the right-hand column now. 
All right, we've made it to the last problem in the worksheet, okay? So this is the very last one. It's a little bit trickier, okay? So I'm gonna work the one in the right-hand column here. So I have six m cubed plus three m squared minus 10 m minus five, okay? We're gonna group them again because they're in descending powers, okay? So I have six m cubed plus three m squared, group those two and then group the last two. Be sure to include this minus sign in your last set of, set of parentheses, okay? So six and three, what's in common between six and three? All right, three will go into six. All right, so I'm gonna pull out a three. Now I have lowest power for your variable. So I have an m cubed and an m squared, so pull out an m squared, all right? When I do that, six divided by three is two. I had three, I took away two, I'm left with one, okay? Plus three divided by three is just one, and I took away this m squared, okay? So three m squared divided by three m squared is one. All right, now, I am looking to make this second set look like this, all right? To do that, I have minuses in both of these, so I'm going to have to pull out a negative to do that because there's no negative in this first set. Now, the 10 and the 5, I know that 5 will go into 10, so I'm going to pull out a 5, okay? Now, I took away the negative. So this should be positive. So negative 10 divided by negative 5 is 2. And then the m, I didn't take any m's away. And then minus 5 divided by minus 5 is 1. Okay, now I made my parentheses match again. All right, so I'm going to carry these two parentheses down. So I get 2m plus 1 times... What's in front? 3m squared minus 5. Okay, this negative is tacked onto that number, so we have to be sure to include it in our parentheses. Okay, so the last problem that you guys are going to do on your own is going to be in the left hand column on this page, and you'll be good to go for your assignment. So, um, hope to see you guys all soon, and have a good day.